ask that we would stand at this time. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth not to thee. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life, in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures evermore. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. Lord, make me to know mine own end and the measure of my days. What it is that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as a hand breath, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, upon them and his righteousness unto children's children. You may be seated. This time we will have a musical selection. Time is filled with swift transition, yes it is. Oh no. Changing hand, you've got a big. 
to God's unchanging Amen, amen. Even at a time such as this, it's good to be reminded uh, there are things in life that change because of circumstances. But it's good to know that God does not change. And we can hold on to God's unchanging hand. At this time, our scripture readings will come uh, Old Testament from Psalm 23, 23rd Psalm. And our New Testament scripture reading will come from the Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 6. The Psalter and the Psalmist in the 23rd Psalm shares with us, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our New Testament scripture reading again will be coming from the Gospel according to St. John uh, chapter 14 beginning at verse number 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In the conclusion of our scripture reading, we're going to ask the Reverend Keith Granson to come down and he's going to share the prayer of comfort uh, followed by a musical selection in that order. to this family in times like these we have a savior we can call on in times like these we can call him so at this hour and at this moment let us go to the throne of grace most gracious and everlasting father God before we ask you for anything we want to say thank you God thank you for another day God God thank you for bringing us to this moment God God, you said everything you do, you do it well, God. So we're asking right now that you be a comfort to this family, God. Be a comfort to his children, God. Be a comfort to his brother, God. Letting them know, reminding God that earth has no sorrow. That heaven cannot heal, God. They remind them that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning, God. God, remind them that in days to come, God, that you'll hold them in the hollow of your hand, God. When the phone calls stop, God, when the visits stop, God, you want to you want to remind them, God, that you'll keep them in perfect peace. God, you said if we look to the hills from which cometh our help, our help cometh from you. So, God, we're asking that you be their comfort at this hour. God, hold them in the hollow of your hand. Give them what they need in days to come, God, to remind them of Uncle Calvin, God, and to remind them of the father and the man that he was, God. Be with this family. Give them what they need in this hour, especially today, God. 
Gird them up, God. Build them up where they're torn down, God. Hold them in places that they need to be held, God. Speak to their weary souls. Speak to their minds and their hearts. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. thank uh, Reverend Grandison for coming and sharing that fervent prayer of comfort and as always as we have been blessed by the musical selections uh, take this opportunity to now uh, welcome the representative from the Jim Wilkerson General Establishment they're going to come at this time with acknowledgments uh, followed by another musical selection I greet you in the one who order our steps, the one who sits high, the one who looks low, and the one who will continue to look low for each and every one of us. To the Ulysses of Bible, Pastor Norm, to the clergy, and to all of you God's children, might the people of God say amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't mind, let's put those hands together as we celebrate the life and legacy of Mr. William Cabin Harris Jr. While I was older, I was reading this obituary, I see his affection known as Buck. The family have me thankful for your presence today, the lovely floor arrangements, the phone calls, the cars, the visits, the use of the personal vehicle, and yet, most importantly, your prayers. I do have some letters to be acknowledged at this time. Grace Baptist Church, Norwalk, Connecticut. To the family, we were deeply saddened to hear the passing of Brother William C. Harris. On behalf of the entire congregation at Grace Baptist Church, we would like to convey our deepest sympathy to you. In this time of great sorrow, please know that you are in our thoughts and our prayers. While we mourn with you, we are reminded in the word of God that Brother Harris' earthly transition is one that has been promised as an eternal life. He is now absent from the body, but present with the Lord. We want you to know how much we care and stand with you, not just now, but in days to come. Always remember that death is not the end. Done this February 10, 2022, for Sister Glory, Grace, and Family. Grace Baptist Church of Norwalk, Connecticut. The Reverend Dr. Lindsey E. Curtis, Pastor. Shiloh Baptist Church, South Chesterfield, Virginia. 
to Mr. Charles Harris and the family of the late Mr. William Calvin Harris, Jr. We the Shadow Baptist Church, South Chesterfield, Virginia, offer our condolences and most heartfelt love and prayers to you and your family during your time of sorrow. Words seem so inadequate at a time like this when we are faced with the loss of a loved one, but may it have bring you comfort to know that times you share together will always live on in your heart. As you go through life's greatest sorrow, may your own faith in God sustain you, bringing comfort today, courage for tomorrow, and hope in your hearts always. We also leave these words with you. Sometimes it is hard to understand why certain things must be, but there is a reason for it all, beyond our powers to see. And, th and through beyond our understanding, may this set our heart at rest, that somewhere in all his wisdom, a loving God knows best. If there's anything we could do to assist you during these difficult times, just know that we are here for you. Done by the Order of Shadow Baptist Church, this 10th day of February, the year 2022. The Reverend Dr. Marcus N. Leggett, Pastor. Olive Branch Baptist Church, Denwood, Virginia. The pastor, officers, and members of the Olive Branch Baptist Church are saddened at the loss of Brother William and extend our condolences to Brother Charles and Sister Cecilia and the entire family for such a heartbreaking loss. We know how we know how hard it is to lose someone you love so dearly. Psalms 18 and 2 states, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield in the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. In this passage, we find the assurance that God is our hope and our hiding place when we comfort the troubles, worries, fear, and sad moments of life, like the death of Brother William. He let us know that we can find abiding peace when we come into his presence. Remember that God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Your Olive Branch, Baptist Church, Olive Branch Baptist Church family loves you and we are here to be of service to you now and in the days to come. Lovely submitted this day, February 10th, 2022, the Reverend Dr. Kevin M. Northern, Pastor. G.W. Carver Alumni and Friends Association, Petersburg, Virginia. We are on Monday, January 31st, 2022, our Heavenly Father in His own time called home this child, William Calvin Harris Jr., from a life of labor to eternal life with Him. And while his child is with his Heavenly Father, precious memories and his legacy of love for his family, his church, and his community are forever memorized here on earth. To God be the glory. To the members of Mr. Harris' family, please know that his fellow Carverites, his fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, extend to you and the entire family our deepest sympathy and love. We are here for you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that believers might have eternal life. It is a hope that his promise will be a comfort to you. We know that he will keep you in his embrace at this time. Sincerely and on behalf of the George Washington Carver Alumni and Friends Association, Dr. Jane J. Baskerville, President. <clears throat> He came ready and equipped to serve. I have not seen William Buckhurst for many years. The last time I can remember seeing him was at a gathering that me and my first wife, Jean, his cousin, had at our home. Then God had it that Buck would join Olive Branch Baptist Church and become a member of the men's ministry. Our relationship began like it never ended. He always called me cousin. One day last October, we were feeding the less fortunate, and I questioned the members of the ministry about cooking turkeys for the Thanksgiving meal. Buck said, I could do it. I said, but it's four turkeys. He looked at me and said, no problem. The plan was to cook four turkeys at our church. I stuck my chest out and invited William to our kitchen at OB, OBBC. Little did I know, he knew much more about the equipment than I did. Buck said, we can cook four turkeys at one time in this oven. I acted like I knew it, he knew how to operate the sink to keep it from overflowing when you drain it. He said, CB, man, this is what I do. I, <laughs> I did not know that Buck had been a chef all his life. We had never served fresh cooked turkeys before. Buck and I had a grand time that day and he looked marvelous in his white chef jacket. Thanks to William Buck Harris and his service to God, we cooked the turkeys, we served the turkeys, and the meal was a success. Isaiah 58, 7 and 10 explains that we should share your food with the hunger. Thank you, Buck. Our mission was complete, and our ministry will miss you. Rest in peace, cousin. Olive Branch Baptist Church Men's Ministry, Mr. Charles Belfield, President. And to the family, on behalf... <laughs> 
and to the family. On behalf of the entire staff and management of the J.M. Wilkinson Funeral Establishment, we want you to know that not only are we praying for you, but we are praying with you. One of the apostles we call Paul said it this way, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I would like to personally lead a family for a very familiar passage of scripture coming out of Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 which reads, Trust in the Lord of all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding and all that ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. God bless you all. at this time that I greet you in the name of him who orders our steps in the name of him who says I am the way the truth and the life uh, I want to on the onset say to this family and all that are gathered that it is my esteemed pleasure and privilege today to come and share words uh, of comfort and of reflection on the man of God the one that we come today to celebrate not only his life but also his legacy I am delighted to say that uh, I have not come across uh, individuals that make much or as much of an impact in a short amount of time as brother Harris did and I want the family to know not uh, just for uh, 
Charles and Cecilia, but to the family. I want them to know that uh, Brother Harris had a church family that loved him. And on a Thursday afternoon during a pandemic, uh, their presence is here. I'm going to ask the members of Olive Branch that are present, if you're able to stand, to please stand. I want the family to see uh, your presence today. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, many are the leaders of many of the men's ministries, some of the hospitality, uh, some just got to like him <laughs> for who he was. Um, I do not take this lightly, uh, but I believe that uh, as God is the life giver, the life sustainer, and the rewarder of life well lived, uh, that when you uh, are able to reside on this earth uh, for some a four score and two years of life and, and I believe that that's an, enough time for us to appreciate God lending him and so I just believe that it's appropriate that we bless God in this place that we put our hands together and thank God for those four score and two years of life amen you do realize, you do realize that uh, God does not have to, and although we know some Bible and talk about uh, three score and ten, and if by some reason four score, well, Brother Harris broke all those records, amen. And we thank God for his length of life and longevity in life. Uh, there are a few things I'd like to share um, today as we uh, celebrate his life. Um, I uh, am privileged as, as a servant leader. Uh, anytime I can stand and, and, and share words of reflection uh, as we celebrate his life, but also to hear what God has to say. Uh, thank God for uh, Reverend Keith Grandison. I uh, know that this is family for him. Um, he affiliated by... Uh, the relationship of uncle for those who don't know uh, that's a biological a bond that you do know of but he's my nephew as well uh, it's not a biological bond it's kind of like I just adopted him amen and we bless God for his presence today leading us in that fervent prayer of comfort there's a particular passage of scripture um, that I have been uh, reflecting upon and uh, on a Monday evening in the middle of a church business meeting um, Brother Harris had received a call and, and uh, he had, Harris had been informed and that was my being informed that uh, Brother Harris had transitioned. And I, I just felt that in the middle of doing church business um, that it was, although we were saddened to get the news, uh, there was a part of me that uh, appreciated the fact that uh, God had orchestrated and directed his path to come by way of a little old rural church in Dinwiddie County. And for that reason, I'm grateful. For that reason, I'm thankful to God. And I believe that the psalmist will help us today as we celebrate his life. Uh, one verse, um, the third verse of the first psalm. Uh, psalm 1, verse 3. The Bible says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I, I believe as we come today to celebrate uh, Harris's life and legacy that uh, we can do so being reminded of uh, one of the most powerful passages of scripture. It is recorded in uh, the longest book uh, that uh, reflects the thoughts of many. Uh, this particular Psalter and Psalmist uh, pinpoints the fact that God has his eye on particular people. Let me say that again. Uh, this psalmist and this psalter pinpoints the fact that God has his eye on particular people. I am convinced that uh, Brother Harris had God's eye upon him. Um, some 
time ago, uh, around about uh, the month of March in the year of 2020. Uh, all of us are familiar because at that moment, uh, this nation and this world uh, was introduced um, globally to a virus that had created a pandemic. What does that have to do with Brother Harris? Well, uh, at that point, uh, for many uh, congregations, for many houses of worship, uh, that was an immediate mandate to shut down. And that was the month of March in 2020. Well, I want you all to know that Brother Harris uh, was not going to let a pandemic stop him from serving the Lord. Around about uh, the month of October, I want you all to know, family, that Brother Harris is a part of history, will always be a part of history in the life of Olive Branch Baptist Church. We had closed the doors, not closed the church, but closed the doors. And in the midst of non-gathering, uh, Brother Harris was able to complete his new members class. And in the month of October of the year 2020, he was part of what I have come to call the Testimonial Ten. Brother Harris was the recipient of the right hand of fellowship in the month of October, the year of 2020, when the church was not even open. Let me say that again. He was the recipient of right hand of fellowship among the others of the testimonial 10 when the church was not even open. Let me suggest to you that is a part of history. But I, I'll go ahead and share with you that is deeper than that and Deacon Winkle is here and during that time we had some faithful and committed uh, new members and we were connecting through um, virtual, we were connecting through technology and every now and again we would have uh, those new members being safe and being careful and cautious uh, because we were in a pandemic. Uh, well, Brother Harris uh, was so eager to begin his new members um, that because the church was was closed in regards of gathering, um, I took the liberty of taking him his new member's book to his crib, y'all. I did not know that Colonial Heights had those parts. I thought I knew about it, so I didn't put it in my navigational system, and so I was riding around for about an hour trying to find his house. Y'all know you got to go around and, and, and okay, yeah, let, let me suggest to you, uh, but I was uh, eager to find out what, because he was eager to be the recipient of his new members book so that he could complete his new members class so he could get the right hand of fellowship as a new member. Now, now what, what does that have to do with the psalmist? Listen, let me suggest to you that that's one of the signatures and the reflections of the type of person he was. I mean, he was a jovial fella. He was one. And, and, and the psalmist uh, does something great. Um, Y'all might be familiar with this particular psalm. It says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doeth he meditate day and night. That's the first two verses. But when he gets to verse three, he says, he is like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And this is what I think about Brother Harris as we celebrate his life today. I gave you that introduction. Three things that come to mind. The three things that are reflected in the first Psalm uh, seminary. Uh, Reverend Grandison will teach us that we have to make sure we let it be known uh, that this is not uh, a male specific when it says blessed is the man. But today we're talking about the man by the way of William Harris Jr. And so here it is. The Bible says in verse 3 and and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And that's really where I want to hang my hat today. Uh, in his season, uh, Brother Harris, watch this, uh, was able to fulfill and accomplish a whole lot of things in his season. 
Yeah, his season has concluded, but let me suggest to you that he made a significant impact in his season. And I don't know about you all, but the one thing that I really uh, uh, endeavor to do is that when my time is up, I don't want folk to have to make up anything. I don't want folk to have to uh, uh, inflate anything. I don't want folk to have to say things that they really didn't mean, that they never said to me while I was living. I I really don't want folk uh, to try to put me up. I really want them to tell what they really meant and, and what I meant to them. Let me suggest to you, he made a significant impact. Yes, here it is. I told y'all about the testimonial 10. Now that was in October of 2020. The church doors did not open up until March of 2021. And let me suggest to you, when the doors open, William Harris was in the house. Let me, let me suggest to you, um, if you're walking in, uh, and I didn't serve as an usher, but let me suggest to you, in the time in a pandemic that we were social distancing, the very first uh, service we had, we had 52. Now we average about 161. Let me suggest to you um, that the very first time that the doors opened uh, and we were exercising social distancing, we weren't hugging nobody, we were wearing masks, we weren't shaking nobody's hand, but when I walked in the door on the third pew as you're going up on the right hand side brother Harris would be sitting there and when I walked in he would turn to the side that I wasn't dapping up nobody shaking nobody head wasn't hugging nobody and it was eating me up if anybody know anything about me I'm a touchy feely pastor amen I love on my members I, I, I like connecting showing the love brother Harris would turn around everybody else knew that I wasn't going to approach him but brother Harris would sit there and he had such a pleasant calm spirit that we dapped it up we dapped it up and he watched this I just love the fact uh, that he was excited just to be in the house and y'all uh, pr- probably know uh, watch this his nature and his character uh, a whole lot more than I do but let me suggest to you in the few months uh, uh, during the pandemic and in the months since we returned I found him to be a pleasant his character was the type of character you wish more folk had amen now, Y'all know there's some folk that come in, in, even in the house of the Lord, frowning. Listen, I've been guilty a time or two myself. Uh, but let me suggest to you, never did he display it, that he was upset with anybody. Never did he display that he was bothered by anybody. And so watch what the psalmist says. The psalmist says uh, he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Let me suggest to you that the psalmist knew that he didn't plant himself. Brother Harris knew that it was God that planted him at Olive Branch Baptist Church. Uh, And let me suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I've discovered that we live in a a world that is challenging enough that sometimes we don't know which way to go. So the best thing we can have and depend on is the Lord leading us and guiding us. Uh, You do understand the Bible says uh, that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. And so I do believe that Brother Harris, watch this, uh, knew that God had planned him there and the Bible goes on to suggest uh, that he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season I told y'all I was gonna hang my head there three things and I'm out your way today the first thing when I think of brother Harris is first of all the psalmist said man has to be acknowledged yeah, that's what he said. Man has to be acknowledged. That's why he said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Watch this. Let me suggest to you, Brother Harris was the type of gentleman that had to be acknowledged. What do you mean? He didn't ask to be acknowledged. He didn't go out his way to be acknowledged. He didn't always talk loud and always uh, uh, start a conversation. As a matter of fact, most of the time, he was very limited in what he said. Uh, but you know those folk that go out their way just to be acknowledged? No, listen, uh, you can get acknowledged just being yourself. You can get acknowledged living a life that God wants you to live. You can be acknowledged sitting there, watch this, just being yourself. Why? Because when God shines a light on you, my Bible says that, watch this, uh, a city that's set upon a hill shall not be hid. He, he did not make us a light to cover it up. Watch this. He gave. He made us a light to shine. And that's just what he did. And so he was a man to be acknowledged. Yeah, he was a man to be acknowledged. Thomas says, and he will bring his forth fruit in his season. 
his fruit in his season. First thing I see, I told you, he's a man to be acknowledged. But not only was he a man to be acknowledged, what I really like about it is that he was also a man, watch this, to be admired. Here it is. You can be acknowledged and not admired. I, I wish I could help somebody. Yeah, yeah. Folk will know you're there, but they don't care much about you. I mean, you you taking up a seat, but there ain't nothing significant about you. He was a man to be acknowledged, but he was also a man to be admired. All right. Okay. You probably wonder why. why let, let me suggest to you. Y'all heard that letter that was read up here? Deacon Belfield wrote a great. That was beautiful. Deacon Belfield. That was wonderful. But the half hadn't been told. But Harris. Listen, went into that kitchen and had that kitchen smelling like that kitchen ain't never smelled before. <laughs> I had no idea. But Charles, I had no idea. Now he said it. But he wasn't aggressive about it. He wasn't bragging about it. He said it. He said the ministries he want to join. I give the microphone when individuals join during the pandemic. Gave the microphone, men's ministry, hospitality, okay, hospitality, okay, well, maybe he knows something I don't know, or, you know, maybe, listen, that kitchen was lit, half hadn't been told. Not only did he work on those four turkeys, but I went in, I got some pictures, I saw the tribute, I looked at it last night online, it's real nice, you see him, watch this, he's helping out with the ministry, he's serving, but he was one to be admired, let me tell you why. He went in there, he cooked that thing, I walked in the kitchen, I'm like, who's cooking this? I looked and I backed up. I said, Brother Harris, I said, you can do it like this. Now listen, I am critical of turkey. Let me say that again. I don't eat. I eat almost everybody's food. Deacon Swites, I eat almost everybody's food. But I don't like dry turkey. And listen, it's true what they say. I've been pastoring almost 19 years and one thing that is true. It ain't all what people cry, uh, say is cracked up to me, but one thing that holds true. I pastor a rural church in Dinwiddie. Let me suggest to you that they make sure that the pastor eat. They do. They, they, they do a great job. Listen, I've tasted more food than anybody in Dinwiddie County. Let me suggest to you. But before I eat turkey, I've got to ask one question. Is the turkey dry? You know why gravy is so popular with turkey? Because turkey dry. Okay, y'all looking at me. Listen, you, ain't too many people be putting gravy on chicken? Gravy, listen, is what made turkey because turkey is dry. So, this was for the half had been told. This was for the hungry. Well, guess who became the hungry that day? <laughs> Don't y'all look at me in that tone of voice. I just had to taste it. I, I, I had to find out. Was it as good to the taste as it was to the smell? So this is what happened. Deacon Belfield was in there. I took pictures. I was like, I got to take pictures of this. That's what I do. Watch this. I posted it. He's on Facebook. Listen, let me suggest to you that he cut a piece of that turkey. And I tasted it. And I hung around in that kitchen. <laughs> the men and, and the ladies, they feed so often in Petersburg. I had to make sure I found out what time they were going to be there. I don't always show up. I'm there sometimes. Let me suggest to you the half what told that was the, what did I say, Dick Belfield? That was the best turkey that I had eaten. That is what I stated in there. And listen, somebody had their dad said, Pastor, don't lie in church. I looked at them and said, you ain't supposed to lie anywhere. <laughs> Let your yeas be yeas and your nays be nays. Let me suggest to you, I know that the hungry was no longer, as a matter of fact, I'm convinced that the hungry was no longer hungry after they ate those four turkeys. Listen, I mean, he is to be admired, a man to be admired, but not just for that, but for fulfilling what he said that he was going to do. Some people say they'll do things, and guess what? That's all it is, is what they say. He is a man to be admired. So the psalmist tells us that he will bear his fruit in his season, in the season in which God placed before Brother Harris, he planted him. He portrayed the attributes of a godly man. Pleasant, cordial, 
But not only was he a man to be acknowledged, not only is he a man to be admired, but lastly, he's a man to be appreciated. Watch this. Everybody that's acknowledged doesn't have to be admired. Everybody that's acknowledged and admired don't have to be appreciated. There's some folk that you might admire what they do, but you don't appreciate it. Why? You appreciate it when, watch this, it becomes a blessing to you and your life. Brother William Harris Jr. was a blessing, not only in the life of his church, but Brother Harris was a blessing in the life of his family. I remember meeting some time ago, and, and I thank the Harrises as they uh, had been fairly new members, and they're, they're not new members anymore. Matter of fact, they've been there a long time. And the same way that he introduced himself to me, or was introduced to me, is the same way in our parting the last time we were together. I remember him navigating me. I appreciate him. I said, I'm in Colonial Heights. You know the story I told you earlier? Listen, I found it. I found it too. I came to, I found where he lived. I was able to deliver him. And he said that he appreciated a pastor that would go out his way. But what he didn't know is that that was healing for me. I had gone months and hadn't seen my, my members. It was tearing me up. So when I got to his house and I could talk, I didn't go in because I was practicing pandemic protocols but he made me feel as though he appreciated it more than anyone else but what he didn't know is that I was the one who appreciated him I appreciate him because he's not only a part of history but I appreciate him because he lived a life that's reflective of one who loves the Lord and he was the type of person that he didn't have to talk and, and, and I've been in this long enough to understand that it's not the loudest folk that's living the best lives it's not the folk that, that even show up the most that's living the best life it's not the folk that, that contributes the most that's living the best life but when you find someone that lives a life that's to be admired acknowledged and appreciated they don't come too often. That's why the psalmist says, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. In less than a two year period, during a pandemic, he was a man to be acknowledged, he was a man to be admired, and he was a man to be appreciated. <laughs> Family, in his season, in his season, he accomplished, he made an impact in his season. Well, his season is no longer, the, uh, his season is no longer existing on this side. And I know he's not going to have to cook in heaven. So how you know you've been there now? <laughs> but ain't nobody there hungry. Let me suggest to you, in his season, in his earthly journey, I thank God, no more suffering, no more weaknesses, and even when he was weak, he never really, he never, listen, he never gave indication that he was weak. Whether he had his cane or not, he was gonna be there, and by the time I came in, he was seated anyway. And I wasn't, I, I told him we couldn't congregate in the commons area. I wasn't even leaving the pulpit. So I could not have the same type of interaction that I would if we were not in a pandemic. And so the, the, the glory of God is present in his life and the impact that he made in the time. In the time. 82 years. Let me suggest to you. I had him for two. And when I say I had him. I was in his company and the pandemic didn't stop our connection. We are thankful. We are grateful. We are appreciative for him and his life. There is a place where there is no darkness. 
There is a place where there is no sickness. There is a place where there is no trouble, for trouble ceases. There is a place, saints of old would say, every day will be like Sunday. Every day will be howdy, howdy. There is a place, but this place is the reward for a life lived in the Lord. Brother Harris has earned his wings. Brother Harris has entered into his eternal rest. And my petition to those of us who remain, let us be like that person that's identified in Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. For he is like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, whose leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Acknowledgement, that was him. Admiration, that was him. Appreciation, that was him. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you. We thank you for the life and the legacy. Brother William Calvin Harris, Jr. And Lord, to so many, known as Buck, but to me, known as Brother. Lord, I thank you for his family. I thank you for these words that you have shared with us. I pray, Lord, that it has been a comfort and a consolation. I pray, Lord, that it brought forth reflection. And I pray that it brought forth acknowledgement, admiration, and appreciation. We bless you now and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.